Okay, bottle of today we're going to do a quick inbox review of the um, the M3A1 Stewart little light tank from Academy. This is a bit of an older kit; it's been around for a while. Uh, it's got an interior, um, which is which is great for what I plan to do with this model. I'm going to have this one as a bit of a destroyed model that's been sitting somewhere and rusted up. So having an interior is really good. I'll be able to open all the hatches and have it weathered inside as well. But um, we're just going to go through an inbox review at this stage and have a look at it, and I'll do a separate video for the build-up of this of this kit. Okay, so as you see, quite nice box art. I actually really like the box art on this thing. Um, it, it's sort of like a, a different era with the, the older style box art on it, um, and I, I love that older style sort of pictures on there, the paintings that they do on these beautiful stuff. Uh, on the side here, we've got a few photos of one that's been built up. Um, this one at the end here shows you the interior and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure how this kit builds up because as I've never, I actually haven't built this one. A uh, nice little picture there of it built up. Okay, so I'm going to open the box up and we'll have a look and see what goodies are inside here. Uh, I have had this open, but quite a while ago and I can't really remember what's, what's inside the box. But straight up here we've got our instructions. Okay, so first page, you know, like normal, you've got a bit of information on the on the tank itself. Um, typical armour build-up, yeah, straight into the road wheels and the base and things like that, the tub. And looks like then we start over on this page here, there's a bit of the interior going together. Um, we've got our seats and stuff over here, and then the interior goes into the tub. Uh, it looks like it's fairly basic, looks like there's not a great deal involved in it. There's colour call-outs by the look of it on each of the parts. Uh, but I'll be going to reference photos and things like that just to make sure I get the, the interior colours right. Even though the, the, the colours are going to be a bit messed up because um, I'm, I'm going to have it all rusted and stuff inside. Um, plus, you know, things like ammo boxes and things like that won't be in there because they wouldn't leave that sort of stuff behind and they abandon the, the tank. And then we go to the top part of our turret here with the, um, the machine gun nest and things like that, and the machine gun housings. Uh, yeah, it's fairly standard sort of stuff, all our fuel caps and things like that. And then it looks like we're going on to the guards, and the tracks are vinyl tracks, I think. Um, you have got a set of vinyl tracks, but there's also a set of individual track links in there that you can put together, um, which I'll probably go with the individual track links. I, I really hate working with vinyl tracks. And then over here we've got our main gun going together up the top here, um, showing you the interior of the, the, the gun turret here. And then that goes on, and over the back here then we've got our fuel cans and machine gun, for the, like the outside machine gun. So fairly basic sort of stuff guys, like I say it's a bit of an older kit so it's not overly detailed. Uh, here we've got our vinyl tracks, and like I say I'll probably use the individual ones, I really hate vinyl tracks. Uh, I mean, they have their place, you can use them, there's tricks you can use to set vinyl tracks up quite nice, but I'm just not a big fan of them at all. Uh, I've got our decals here, and they're still wrapped in the packet. Um, again, it probably depends on how weathered I'm going to have this thing, I don't think I'll be using too many decals on there. Um, maybe the white stars, but I'll, I'll actually um, cut those out and then spray it on there in, in a, like a, a really faded sort of look maybe. And I'm going to sort of decide that as I go through the build. And on here we've got our um, decal callouts, colour callouts, things like that for the different versions of, of the tank obviously. The other side there, we've got our, carts, uh, our uh, sprue callouts and the parts. Oh, just the normal warning sheet that goes in there. Okay, our first baggie of goodies here. Uh, looks like this is a bit of the outside stuff, toolboxes, things like that. Uh, we've got yeah, a few tools, machine gun. Uh, we've got a couple of um, bags here, handles, uh, uh, ammo crates, axe, things like that. So there's all the out outdoor stuff. There's um, just looking at the mouldings on this, they look maybe a little bit thick, but I mean, as you, this is you expect with an older kit. This is not. This has been around for a while, so obviously the mouldings are going to be a bit thicker than normal. Um, but I can't see any flash or anything on them, and the, and the parts seem to have some quite nice detail in them. Uh, especially for something that's a bit older like this, there's a wooden crate there, you can see it looks quite nice, it's got the wood grain into it and things like that. But um, yeah, it looks quite nice, uh, I'm not sure what that is, it looks like a radio, maybe with all the, all the dials and stuff on it up in here, I'm not sure if you can see that or not. I just wind this camera back out a bit guys, so you can see a bit more of what I'm doing here. Okay, this bag here, we've got our road wheels, 
our sprockets, um, they look nicely moulded, no flash around those. Uh, one thing I'd say where the tips are where you cut it off, there's a normal procedure, they put them on the tips, so you have to be careful cutting that off, cut it off right away from the tip so you don't take the tips off there. Yeah, everything looks quite nicely moulded though, and all our suspension works there, some nice detail moulded into those. And then we have our individual tracks in, in this bag as well. And uh, yeah, I, I can see what sort of tracks I, I have worked with these. They're not the greatest tracks in the world to work with, guys, believe me, but um, they won't be too bad. Be, there's, there's these ones here, then there'll be other parts that join these together. So uh, the thing with using these, the, um, the plastic pins that go on there are fairly, uh, you know, like they're, they're not very tough, they're very fine. Um, and when you're putting them together, you've got to be very careful because if, if you've got to push too hard to get them on there, they'll break off and things like that. Um, and they're not really workable, you do have to glue them together. Um, so you sort of do that in one sitting on one side if you want sag and things like that. But I mean, they look nicely moulded and everything, but you know, they're, they're a bit of an older individual track type thing. Um, here in these bags here, we've got our top part, and I can see some really nice detail on that actually, guys. It's um, what I might do, I'll take it out of the bag so I can give us a decent look at it. Okay, and hopefully you can see on the video some really nice detail on that. I mean, the rivets look obviously a bit heavy-handed. I mean, this tank did have some big heavy rivets on it, but they're a bit overdone, obviously. Um, the engraved parts I can see down the front here, and they aren't too bad. I mean, they're still a little bit, a little bit big, but I mean, it, like I say, it's, it's a much older kit, and um, you know the manufacturing wasn't the same back when they were doing these. But it's not too bad at all. All the detail seems to be on there. Uh, there's a tub, it's got the detail underneath as well, um, down the sides here, we've got a nice rivet detail going on down in the sides here. But yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all guys, I've seen much worse, put it that way. And this sprue here, we have, looks like this is the floor for the interior, there's a lot of the interior stuff. Um, we've got our divider there, ammo, things like that. Um, but that that's all, again, it's got detail on it, I mean it's not overly detailed but it's it'll suffice for what we're doing with this thing here because like I say it's going to be abandoned now these are clips I was saying that'll put the tracks together they'll go onto those pins on the outside of those other tracks um, and as you can see two little holes go on the two pins but like I say if, if the pins and the holes um, are a bit of a mismatch you've got to push them on and they can break so it's something you have to be fairly careful of when you build this kit but um, again, I don't see any flash or anything like that. Uh, like I say, the detail's a little bit sparse, but um, yeah, for what we're going to do with this kit, that'll be fine. And here we have our main gun turret up here. Um, again, it's got some nice detail on that. The rivets again look fairly, fairly big. They are fairly heavy-handed with those rivets. I can see a couple little weld seams, which the weld seams are quite nice around there, around the hatches. Uh, a bit more of the interior for your top turret. Uh, some more handles here, got our fuel drums here, obviously the fuel drums go together separately. Not sure they're going to have the fuel drums on this thing, I think I'll have them off, or maybe I'll have one on there or something, but I'm uh, just looking around the, the turret here, the machine gun turret here, oh, the main gun turret. It's got some nice cast effect on that, which is really nice actually. Uh, got our guards there, but yeah, it all looks fairly nice guys. Um, and we've got a dead, dead beetle in our box here, which I'll take out. Goodness knows how long that's been in there. But anyway guys, it doesn't look like a bad kit, uh, I'll do a separate video with the build up of this kit and um, you can watch that as I, as I do it to see what the fit issues and things are with this thing and just see how it turns out. So we've got the base together here with all the running gear on it and as you can see this is a very very tiny little tank, uh, being a light tank I, I suppose, I mean you expect it to be fairly tiny but if you put this next to like a Tiger or even a Sherman, I mean this is a very very tiny little piece of armor. But the fit is really, really good uh, for a kit that, this, that is this old. Um, the fit was actually superb for all the running gear and stuff like that. And as you can see, it's actually all working as well. Um, I mean, it's not going to be working once I put the tracks on it, but if you want to put the, the rubber bands on it, you'll be able to actually have this thing moving if you want to go that way. But like I say, the fit is superb uh, for an older kit. And so far, yeah, no problems at all. Everything's just gone together the way it should do. It, it's, dare I say, like building a Tamiya kit at this stage, everything's just really working well. And it looks the part, looks very, very good. 
So the next step of it is um, I'm going to be doing all the interior parts, um, like all the, um, there's a radio already in there, but all the shell bays and things like that. And once I get all that in there, I'm going to actually paint the interior and start weathering the interior up uh, to make it look like a, a rusted out, abandoned um, piece of machinery that's just been left somewhere for years and years. But anyway, guys, look, I'll just turn the camera back on just to let you know that um, really good fit, really good kit so far. And I'll turn the camera back on at the next step. Okay, modelers, I just thought I'd quickly throw this in here. This is something I do on, on all my builds, uh, but just in case people haven't seen my builds, something I do, especially with more complex kits, um, I label all the sprues. Uh, now this one here, as you can see, is a C, and I'll put that bit of tape and a marking pen on all the sprues. That just helps you when you've got uh, quite a few sprues. This one here's got, what, uh, seven sprues, um, but some of the Dragon kits may have, you know, dozens of sprues that you've got in the box. And it just helps you, like when you're looking for a part, like calls out for a C or a D or whatever, you can see those tags very easy um, compared to trying to look at the little labels on, on each sprue. It, it's a really good tip. Um, I, I throw it in every video just in case people haven't seen any other videos that I've done. But yes, just a quick tip, guys, and um, I'll see you in the next part of the video. Okay, modelers, so the model is all together now. Uh, I've just got a few odds and ends that have got to go on the outside of the tank but I'm going to put those on last because I don't want fine pieces on there that I can knock off and I've still sort of got to decide what I want to have still on the tank now, I mean most of the tools and things like that would have been taken off and abandoned in the tank they wouldn't have left too much on it um, this thing's supposed to have been knocked out, abandoned um, a few things taken off it during the war and then it's just been forgotten about and just left to rust where it sits so all I've done uh, I've done an undercoat just in a Tamiya grey. Uh, then I went over it with the um, the AK chipping colour, which I should have here somewhere. Um, this guy here, okay, the AK chipping colour. This guy, okay. Now all I've done is airbrushed everything inside and out that I've got together with that colour. And what I'm doing now, I'm going over just doing a bit of sponge chipping. Now sponge chipping is just I've got my tweezers here with a little bit of sponge in it and I've got in uh, this colour here which is old rust okay this one here and you forgive my fingernails guys because I was hanging on to something when I sprayed it and I've just got it in in a um, little paint palette over here I'm dipping it in there getting most of it off like the excess off now forgive me if I go a bit astray guys because I'm again I'm doing this at a weird angle I'm just going over and doing a bit of sponge chipping and it's just random, it's, it's sort of all over the place. Um, obviously the chairs are not going to rust because they're, they're rubber. But I'm just going over in different places. Oh, forgive me, I've just lost my sponge, but here we go. Okay, I'm just going over all this. And I'm going to do the same on the outside of the tank. Now what I'm going to do after this colour here, I'm going to go to a lighter colour rust, which is this guy here, uh, which is the dark rust. I don't know why they call it dark, it's a very orangey looking colour. But I've got um, five different colour rust colours there, like the ready different colours. I'm going to do the same thing, just sponge chip everything. And then I'm going to go over with um, the pastels, which is these guys here, the AK rust colour. Get that to focus for you, that guy there. Now what I do with that, I go around the edges of things. Um, like around the edge of like the radio here, around the edge of this okay now what I'm going to do is on the edges where I put this what it does is when I do an overspray and do some um, hairbrush chipping it gives this a bit of texture and that's the idea of using the powders in here it gives a little bit of texture um, now I sort of dab it on while it's still a little bit moist blow off the excess and go over again okay now you, you do this while the paint is moist and that way the powder sticks to it a little bit better and you'll see what I mean by um, chipping later on where it gives it a bit of texture like where the edge of the rust is peeling up there's a bit of texture underneath the paint but anyway guys I'll go on to the I'm, I'm just going to do the whole tank like this and I'll go on to the next step before I do the next step I'll turn the camera back on and I'll show you what I'm doing okay model so as you can see I've got now, I've done the sponge effect over everything there. Now, and that's that's the effect I'm after, like just a few different tones to break up the rust. You don't want to do it in one colour. Uh, I've got five different colours sort of sponged on there. I've done it with sponging plus 
bit of dry brushing and stuff like that. Now, what I'm going to do now is um, try and put a bit of texture in. By, I've got some rust powder on the side here. And where I know that the paint is going to chip up, like on the edges, I'm just going to dab this stuff around, the rust powder. And hopefully you can see this on the camera without my head getting in the road, which you know, looks okay. Um, just forgive me, guys. I've got to try and concentrate because I'm on a really... Okay, sorry about that guys, but the uh, the camera cut out in the middle of that. <clears throat> but all I've done, I've put that weathering powder around, and then I used another brush, and I dip it in some, some turps over the side here, and just dab it on, like so. Now the idea of that is, it makes that powder stick to the surface much better. Now the other technique you can use, is I've got the powder mixed up here in like a mud consistency, just with some, um, well, what have we got here? Some um, enamel thinners, okay. And it's the same sort of thing, but you just sort of dab around the edges like so, like that, okay. And you can see where it's already dried off there, where I've done another coat. Now, this this is two different ways to do it. You can do it in other ways. These are two ways I mainly use. Now, when you do it this way, it leaves a really, really bright stain where you've put that rust powder whereas this one here it sort of blends it in when you when you put the powder on first and then the thinners it sort of blends it into everything else this one here it because it's like a mud consistency when it dries out you can see a distinct line where you put that now the idea of doing this is when i put the base coat over this and i chip it off well, i'm going to use a hairspray tech hairspray chipping technique and i chip it off and it's going to leave like a um a rough surface underneath that base coat so it looks like it's got a, a three-dimensional um, rusting thing like you know like this paint with rust underneath it lifting the paint up now like I say if you can do it this way here it's a very very distinct line this one here spreads it out a bit more now both have their uses like this one here when it's dried out you can use another brush and just sort of thin it out like so okay just sort of brush it around a little bit so you don't end up with that that distinct line okay it will still have the same sort of effect like it'll be a little bit lifted up where this is that's a little bit wet there still obviously as you can see but also what this will do is give like a streaking effect down the side so where I use that technique is down the sides I don't use it so much over the top where it's flat surfaces I'd rather use this technique but where there's actually a runoff I like to use this because it leaves that streaking effect as you brush the powder downwards okay and then when you do the painting, uh, I mean, obviously, like I say, this is still a little bit wet, so it's not working like it should be. But um, you'll get the idea. I'll do the back part here like that, and I'll do the rest of it in the other, other way. And you'll be able to see what I mean, the difference in the way to do this. Okay, guys, so turn the camera back off. I've got to go over the entire tank and do this now before I put the hairspray and the base coat on. And I'll turn the camera back on at that stage. Okay, modelers, please forgive the sound of the compressor running in the background. Uh, I do need to have it on to do this next step so hopefully you can hear me over the sound of the compressor and all I've done so far guys as you can see the rust is already on there um, I went around like I said in the previous step and just put the, uh, the rust powder around all the edges and I've given it two good coats of hairspray the hairspray is just cheap stuff I got from a dollar store um, and I've given it two good heavy coats of it and as you can see some of it's still a little bit tacky looking um, but to make the chipping effect work much better you, I sort of I don't let it dry for too long um, and I'm just going to go over now and put the the base coat over it the base color and I've just all I've done is used a Tamiya color um, I haven't gone with the it's supposed to be an olive drab color but I've gone with this one here the olive green which is a bit lighter than the the drab because it's supposed to be really faded um, there's not going to be much of this left on there anyway by the time I chip it off and rust it but um, it, it, what what is on there would be really weathered by the time the tank is to this stage so we are going with a lighter colour I'll do the whole thing in this colour then I'll put a bit of white in to lighten it down and, and do like the centre of the panels with that colour with a much lighter colour but um, it's just you don't need to put the thick coat on okay all I'm going to do is the first coat is just like this just a very light coat and that just gives it a base to sort of hang on to just enough so you can just see the colour just starting to 
cover the rust like so I'll spin it around a little bit here and remember to get it all the angles so you get on the inside and on the edges of everything all down around your road wheels make sure you get all underneath the turret that's all going to be chipped off pretty much but you want to make sure this coat goes on there over everything up underneath the back here okay like I say this is just the the first like a pre-coat like it's just just only just a little small bit of paint on there and what this does it just you let this settle for a bit to sort of grip into the the hairspray okay and that's pretty much that first coat done as you can see it's, it's changed the color of the tank already like you can see a bit of that green starting to go on there and now that that's sort of settled down a bit I'm going to put it on a little bit thicker and this one here you'll start to see the tank actually turn to its proper green color and this is watered down just with tap water with just a little bit of soap in it like a really really minute amount of soap and the idea of doing it with water and soap it just makes it much easier to chip off when you come to do the chipping As you can see, that's starting to change the colour of the tank now to a proper green colour. Okay, I don't want to put this on too thick because then you won't be able to get it all back off. Or if you can, it's you've got to scrub it to get it off and it's going to damage the paint underneath if it's still not dried properly. Like so, now you can see the rough texture of the rust powder that's underneath that paint and that's good because that's what you want to have is that, that rust texture like the rust is growing underneath the paint so that's that one done now what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to go over and give another coat but with the white mixed in so that um, like it's going to be faded in the middle of the panels like really faded back in the middle of the panels and that'll be it then, then I'll, I'll let that settle for a few minutes and then I'll start the chipping process. When I'm doing the chipping I'll turn the camera back on and show you how that goes. Okay modelers, I'm up to the point now, I'm going to start chipping some of this paint off. Um, and all I do, I've just got some water over here with again a little bit of that soap in it, just a little bit. And all I'm going to do is because I want the edges to be chipped more than anything else, I'll go around just damp the edges up like so. You don't need too much water, just brush it on just so it's nice and damp. And you can see even while I'm brushing this water on that's already starting to chip off there. And then I just go around and just start brushing over it and you'll see it starting to lift off around them edges. Now you sort of want to run your brush in the direction of where the rust streaks, where you want your rust streaks to go sort of thing. And you can see there how that's coming up already, that's already starting to knock off all that stuff on the edges up the top here is just taking a little bit longer for it to soak through but it's starting to work there now as you can see and clean the brush off a little bit and then I just run it over the whole panel now the idea of running it over like this is it changes the color of that paint underneath <coughs> and leaves like a bit of a streaking looking effect now this is not looking all that great at the moment because I'm, I'm just having trouble doing this at this angle but you can see how that works there and you can take off as much as you want um, or as little as you want it's up to you how much of that paint you actually want to strip away but you can have like you know maybe a streak through the middle there where it's just about all gone like so it's good to make it a little bit uneven like rust would be like it's an uneven effect like so okay now of course this isn't the end of it I am going to go over and do some more rusting in it but that's that side there and this side here you can see it's still wet down the bottom here where I've just finished doing this side okay so that's the sort of effect we're after guys there um, with that nice chipping look to it 
and then I'm going to go over and do some more rust streaking and stuff after I've, I've finished this part off. But I'll go around the whole tank now guys and do that. And as you can see I've started down here around the tracks and that as well. So make sure you do that the, the whole tank, don't miss anything. Okay guys, I'll continue on with this and I'll turn the camera back on at the next step. Okay modelers, so as you can see the, the chipping's all done now. And all I'm doing now is going around putting a few uh, pastel powders on there. All it is is just like these pastel chalks, like these guys here, and just grind them down. Uh, you can use rough sandpaper or I just use a blade and scrape down the side. And I've just sort of broken a few colours up, as you can see there, like just different rust colours from dark through to a, a bright light sort of a colour. And all I'm doing is just using a, a small brush. I'll get him back out of the side here, I've got him on the side and can't reach it, there we go. Okay, it's just a, a small brush, and all I'm doing is, is going along where I want to put the rust, like so. Now the idea of this is it's going to give it a, a bit of texture as well as some more rust colour in there, so I'm putting the dark one on first, sort of push it in a little bit, okay, then I get a bit of a brighter colour, mix in with it, okay, like so. Just blow the excess off and when I've done that then I sort of brush downwards and this is going to give it a rust streaking effect as well as I brush downwards and as you can see that just sort of brightens that rust up there along the back I'm going to go around the whole model like that um, when I finish that I'll put a, a matte coat on and then I'll do some more rust streaking some heavier rust streaking down the sides and things like that and if I need to touch up any of this rust area um, I'll touch it up at that stage because with the matte coat the rust will stick on there a lot better but um, yeah it's just going around the whole thing and doing that um, I'm going to do this one here without the tracks the tracks are going to be all rusted up but I'm going to have it sort of sunken into a, uh, a display base so it's been there so long it's actually sunk into the dirt a bit um, I'm going to make that base up probably the next few days hopefully I'll get time to do that um, so hopefully I'll be able to take photos of it on the base um, but if I run out of time I'll just take photos of it the way it is at the moment uh, you can, but you get the idea of, of how to rust up a vehicle then. Okay guys, I'll turn the camera back on at the next step. Okay modelers, so I've finished up on this one now. Uh, I just built a very simple base. All I've done is use some, some plaster to build up underneath. Uh, I sprinkled like sand and dust over that. And while it was still soft, I sunk the tank into it. So it looks like it sort of sunk into the dirt over the years. And um, that's pretty much all I'm going to do with it. I've just put a... A coat of uh, flat over everything to sort of hold it down and um, keep the weathering powders held on in place and I'm quite happy with the way it come up it does certainly look the part um, I haven't done any more weathering since the last step as far as powders I ain't done the same as what I was saying just putting the, the dust around the edges and things like that but um, a really nice little kit it built up really nicely the fit there was no fit issues everything fitted beautifully um, yeah, I mean, I definitely recommend the kit. Whether you want to do this to it or build it up as a normal kit. The normal kit's obviously got a lot more on it. It's got tools and things like that. And there's big fuel drums on the back and toolboxes and different things. Uh, this one here is just basically say that it looks like it's been abandoned and just left there to, to, to rot, basically. Um, the reason I left the main barrel in is because, as you can see, the end of it here is all blown apart like they destroyed the barrel. Um, so it was no use to anyone that wasn't worth stealing. Uh, all the machine guns have been removed from it. There's no MO crates or anything on it or anything like that. Um, the tracks are gone. Um, obviously, they would have taken a lot of tracks because tracks are something that kept wearing out, so they would have used them as spares. But everything else just got left there. But anyway, guys, um, I'm going to take some still photos of this, and um, hopefully, you really enjoyed this build and got got a few things out of the um, the rusting techniques that I used. Yeah, there are different rusting techniques obviously and I'll, I will be doing those on other builds but um, to get the look I wanted on this that, that worked out fairly well. So anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.